In this segment, I will solve another question from the viscosity concept. The uniqueness of this particular example is that the velocity profile that I will be dealing with is non-uniform. And this problem will illustrate you how to approach these type of problems. Let's read the question statement. Wind passing the top of a building creates a boundary layer. Boundary layer is a concept that I will introduce in module 11 towards the end of this course. The velocity profile within the boundary layer is as shown in the figure below. Determine the magnitude of the force exerted on the building as a function of the boundary layer thickness delta, wind velocity, capital U, and the surface area of the building, A. Take the density of the air as 18 times 10 to the minus 6 Newton second per meter square. Okay, before solving it, let me talk a little bit about the boundary layers. So what happens is, I have a wind from here to here, and the wind velocity is capital U, which is over here, okay? And in real life, what will happen is, when the wind interacts with a solid surface, they will generate a boundary layer. Again, I will not talk about this at this point in time, but I would like you to understand a little bit about it, okay? So this is due to the no-slip condition. For the no-slip satisfied, where the wind is touching to the top of the building, the velocity will be zero. Yet at some distance, it will be capital U. Okay? The thickness of where it reaches from zero to actually 99% of the capital U will be called the boundary layer thickness. Okay? And there's a constant number basically in my equation. And the capital U is the wind velocity. So let's look at this equation. This is the very important equation. U as a function of y will be equal to 2 times y over delta minus y over delta square. And note that the left-hand side is non-dimensional because I divide this by capital U. This is non-dimensional, this is non-dimensional, so this is a non-dimensional equation. I already wrote you the equation that I need to use. The good thing about this chapter is there's not many different equations that you'll be confused which one I should be picking. It's just a equation. In the previous segments, I was approaching this as delta U, delta Y, due to the fact that the velocity change was linear. Okay, so now let's take another approach. So I will look at this equation and let me write it this way. You will see why. U of y will be 2 y over delta minus y over delta square times the capital U. So I simply, what I did was I moved this capital U from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation and then if I look here, I'm interested in du dy. So why don't I approach that? Let's look at, take a look at it. du dy. So what will it be? So the first of all, this capital U will be right over here. Let's not forget about that. Okay. So what will be the derivative of this term? 2 is constant and 1 over delta is constant as well. So those will come out of the derivative. So it's going to be 2 over delta. So let's look at the second term and I see some issues sometimes from here, students getting confused. So what will that be? So that will be 2y because the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y divided by, it's going to be delta squared. Let's not forget the square. Sometimes I see students forgetting the square over here. Sometimes I see students writing over here as a 2, which is both not quite right. Okay, so now I get myself du dy. And I'm going to take this and insert it to the equation that I do have. So the shear stress will be equal to viscosity times capital U times 2 over delta minus 2y over delta square. Okay, if I read the question carefully, the question is asking me to find the force, not the shear stress. And the relation between the shear stress and the force is simply multiplying by area, right? Shear stress times area is equal to force. So let's write it this way, viscosity, u, and the surface area is given as a, so that will be 2 over delta, 2 is constant, delta is constant, minus 2 over delta square times y. Okay, so this is the force. So is this my final answer? No, it's not. Because take a look, read the question. If it asks, determine... The magnitude of the force exerted on the building. So the building in here is defined as y is equal to zero. Do you see the arrow over here? Okay. And if you don't, let's say that I don't give you 
the origin. Can you find where the origin is? Yes. What the origin is defined in this particular case where velocity is zero, right? So if I plug y is equal to zero in here, that will be zero, this term. If I put zero here, that will be zero. So my velocity will be zero. So that makes sense. What it means is I need to put the force at y is equal to zero. And which will be viscosity u a 2 over delta minus 2 over delta square and y but I'm going to evaluate this y is equal to 0 and if I plug y is equal to 0 to here what will I obtain is this term will vanish right so let's go ahead and rewrite this so my force at the building will be equal to 2 viscosity u a divided by delta okay in this problem I gave you the viscosity value of air 18 times 10 to the minus 6 so then we can simply insert it there so basically insert here 18 times 10 to the minus 6 and I so if I plug this in you will see that this is going to be 36 times 10 to the minus 6 velocity of the free stream a divided by the delta So now the question is, does this make sense? One thing is, this is linear proportional to the wind velocity. It does make sense to me. As I increase the wind velocity, there will be more force on my building. It says it is directly proportional to the area as well. Yeah, it does make sense, right? If I have a particular shear stress, the more surface area that I have, I have the more force I'm going to have on the building. That makes sense. This is a little bit harder to explain at this point in time. Okay, it's inversely proportional to the boundary layer thickness. I will have to revisit this when I cover module 11. Okay, uh, but this is what it is. And what you can see here is the force is going to be fairly small depending on the values because you see there's a minus 6 over here. 